Right, well, South Africa continues to see an increase in gender-based violence cases in the country. A non-profit organization, Gender-Based Violence Monitor South Africa, has come up with a way of keeping track of cases and, in, and bringing justice, criminal justice in rural areas. The initiative aims at increasing response to cases of GBV, especially in disadvantaged areas like villages and rural parts of South Africa. To talk about this, uh, we have on the on, via Zoom with us Omukholo Daunyane Nguni. Thank you so very much for being with us on SABC News. We certainly do appreciate your time. Let's start with... Good afternoon, Flo. Uh, let's start with talking about GBV Monitor South Africa. What is it and, 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 and what, did, what made you come up with this? Well, afternoon, Flo, and good afternoon to your listeners. So GBB Monitor South Africa, it is an NPO um, which is doing research. Um, we have a tracker of GBV cases. And lastly, what we really, you know, want to do is to do a you know systemic evaluation of the rural criminal justice system and the reason you know i i had to do this kind of work and found this organization was because i've just been really frustrated you know with the institutional inertia you know regarding how we respond to gbv um, amongst our communities and that is why i founded this organization yeah. one of the things I've, I've always been and you use the word frustrated i've also been quite frustrated when i talk to organizations uh, that talk to to gbv i've always said you know what's the purpose uh, you know of these sort of organizations what do you do all right you're an organization that focuses on on issues pertaining to gbv but we continue to hear cases of gender-based violence. I mean, just recently, a Forte, a final year law student, was found, you know, her body just uh, chopped in pieces, essentially, and discarded of uh, by her boyfriend. So, and, and, and just, just a couple of years ago, we heard about uh, a young man burning his, his, his girlfriend in, in a felt. I mean, we continue, and then, we, you know, we get shocked, and then we kind of, you know, we also heard about Uyunene. We get shocked, we get upset, but then something else happens, and then we get, you know, the cycle then continues. And so I always ask uh, organizations that focus on GBV, what's different this time? What's different in your, in your organization? What can you tell us about what you plan? And I, and I hear you talking about a tracking device, but what will you do after you've tracked? where these cases are then happening right so what we what we do with the tracker and what the tracker enables us to do is to look at a granular detail we really have a granular detail on incidents that are being reported um, in in gbv incidents so we use the media as our source of data collection as well as the national prosecuting authority they've been very helpful with providing us information and then we can populate our tracker which then tells us where these incidents are happening. It can give you a location of where these incidents are happening, which SAPS police station the particular incident was reported. Um, if there's an arrest that has been affected, then we know what the charge is, the charge that was laid and the nature of the arrest. Was there bail um, issued for the alleged accuser? Yeah. Then we can start telling a story about what would, for instance, Omoholo's experience be should she approach, you know, law enforcement to say, my lover um, has raped me or he has beaten me? Yeah. We can then say, right, Omoholo's case has now been allocated a court date. Um, it will be appearing at the Bloemfontein Magistrate Courts, just to give an example. And then we say, who is the presiding officer on this particular case? Mm -hmm. So Judge Flo Ledwaba has been a judge for 15 years now let's have a critical look at the kind of verdicts yeah. that judge Lidwaba, um implements that they lay down mm -hmm. do they dismiss the cases do they give minimum sentences or maximum sentences what kind of trend can we start painting um, mm -hmm. when looking at these kind of things so it's really granular in a way that we don't already have in the media space that's really an important uh, it certainly is very important
Another question really is about, you know, it seems, and, and I'm looking at, you know, the, the, you know, how you came up with the organization, but what, what struck me was, was that, uh, you know, you seem to have a particular interest, and maybe I should use the word uh, bias, um, towards the rural criminal justice system. I wonder, is it because you feel that there is lack in that regard? Because, you know, when, when I look at the news and as, as, as someone who is, is an anchor, you know, some, those, those issues of gender-based violence are, are really widely felt, you know, um, it's, it's women in rural areas, even us here in urban areas are dealing with it. So I wonder why the particular focus for you on, on, on rural women and, 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 and rural, uh, you know, on, on rural villages and gender-based violence in those particular areas? You know, one of one of the advantages of having worked in the media before is that it's very easy to then see where the missed opportunities lie yeah. and how you can plug in um, where there's a need for that. So, you know, we can give, I have many examples. We have Zerofa um, Zobule, we have Abo Garabo, Mugwena, many mm -hmm. other women mm -hmm. where the media was very good at following those cases in detail and to give us, you know, updates as developments occurred. And, and that was made possible you know, by mere fact of these women, you know, who are, who are, you know, who had died, um, they were located in Haute, they're located in Johannesburg, and there's a huge media concentration of media houses here. Yeah. So we are, I understand that the media doesn't always have the resources to find the stories, you know, of things of injustice, of GBV that is happening in far-flung rural communities. And that's what I'm most interested in. I want to know what is happening to Omoholu who approaches the police station, Botavanshu, 60 kilometers from Bloemfontein. Mm. What happens to her? What is her experience of interacting with the criminal justice system? I want to know. Um, are our, are our police stations in rural areas well resourced? Do we have rape kits that are available there to immediately assist a survivor who approaches the stations? You know, um, where is it where you know there is inefficiencies, and how can we provide a solution to fix them? Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm interested in. You know, it's it's very important when we talk about uh, NPOs and uh, an organization like yourself. You would obviously need uh, funding. You would obviously need capacity uh, to to keep going to do the kind of work that you're doing. When you're talking about, you know, tracking devices, for example, things like this don't necessarily come cheap. Talk to us about the success rate. You know, what does it look like for 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 an organisation uh, like yourself that that certainly does rely on you know uh, people being able to assist and and funding. Mm. Mm. You know, I've been fortunate, you know, that the funds that I had could bring this to life, that it has brought us this far, you know. But the reality is that um, this, is, this is a big vision, you know, it's a huge mission that we have set ourselves to doing and to achieving. Mm. Um, it needs to be well-funded. It needs to be a well-oiled machine. Um, but, you know, at the same time, we are a very new organization. We are very new to the civil society space. Yeah. So there's a lot that we still need to do, you know, to reach out to different stakeholders, um, to do all the fundraising that is needed yeah. to make sure that we can or get researchers who can really be on the ground and find these stories. I don't want us to have to rely on, you know, our media sources that we have now. I want to be on the ground. I want the organization to be on the ground and to find these stories and really, you know, um, tell, really tell the story of what happens in, in rural areas. Yeah. Um, and highlight that, and yeah. highlight that. All right, uh, Umukhulu, thanks for the work that you're doing, and we wish you luck uh, with uh, the organization. We'll certainly be keeping up to date uh, with uh, the work that you'll uh, be doing uh, from now onwards. Thank you so much.